Good evening, everyone. This is Chrissy from Solstice ATR. I hope everybody's doing great. You can check us out on Twitter, Discord, as well as YouTube, and you can subscribe. I will be doing this video very shortly and make it brief to the point that everyone understands. Remember, we use this for illustration use only. We're not a broker dealer. Past performance doesn't indicate future results. Let's first of all talk about the volatility that happened this week in the market for the average consumer or an average investor. It's going to drive them nuts going up and down like a yo-yo in the market. We will be covering part of the S&P, part of the Dow, the NASDAQ, gold, crude oil, and bonds. Some ETFs you can pause the video so you can take a look at the JNK, NYA, the VIX, Bitcoin. XLK, XLE, XLF, and IEF, as well as some of the currencies. Remember, the most important thing looking at charts, whether we look at the long term, weekly, monthly charts, daily charts, keep an eye that historical is not the same as what's going to happen in the future, other than just looking at it as a reference point. Try to predict what the markets gives you, trade the charts in front of you, don't be biased to one side. And don't stay wrong in order for money to flow into your pockets. Okay, let's first get started by taking a look at some of the instruments out there. And I will be covering the four instruments combined by adding a plus sign here. It makes it more easier for us to recognize. I do have the monthly fibs as well as the weekly fibs up here. As we can see on the monthly fibs, we have them up here. The monthly shows up here. We have the 38, 50, 61, 78, and 100% retracement on the monthly highs and lows for the combination of the instruments. We looked up in March. We eventually fell down in the last week and we recovered in the last two days, Thursday and Friday, back into the range of the prior two week range. The most important thing is we understand that there is sector rotations from technology company, biotech company to consumer products, uh, staples and uh, construction and uh, other stuff. So don't be biased to one side. As we can see, we are in an uptrend symmetrical triangle. I will zoom in a little bit more. We are still in a down slope. As we can see, we can draw a channel here, but we eventually broke up and I added this one here. We are in an open cone. As long as we do hold that 51,500, I'm going to be more biased to the upside unless we are losing it. Then we come back to the backside of this channel and we fall further down. I will break this by going at the Dow Joe Industrial Average one by one. We'll come in here. We'll take those symbols out. We'll go YM, DJI, dollar sign DJI is the Dow Joint Industrial Average or the DOW, which is the ETF fund for the E-mini contract on the Dow Joe. As we can see here, we came back in the range. We created an, a decline like stair step. Then on Wednesday, we looked up. I mean, Thursday, we looked up. I mean, Wednesday, we looked up. Thursday, we went back down below and came back into the prior two days range, three days, and eventually on Friday in that overnight action, we looked up, which was stayed in that range, and we continued higher on the Dow Joe Industrial Average to reach the annual high up here at the 33,116. So let's take a look at now the, some of the components in the Dow that makes it a little bit more efficient. If we look at the BA, that is Boeing. That was the prior week, you know, news on Boeing, you know, getting some orders in. Then we eventually fell down in the last week or so. And you can see we stayed in the upper, you know, break out of it. We retested it. We came back up. I am keeping an eye on the 247, 250 area. If Boeing can continue higher and break out, come back to the uh, 260, then eventually the 268. That's what I'm looking for. If we lose this 116 simple moving average, we come back into the range of the 235. I will look a little bit further down into that range where we can meet the prior channel and the 200 SMA on Boeing.
we can take a look at ExxonMobil. Because remember, ExxonMobil is part of, uh, used to be part of the Dow, but you can look at Chevron. But I put the ExxonMobil so we can see how the components in the oil sector as well. You know, we have uh, that uh, canal being blocked, so it's causing a little bit of electricity in the region, you know, on shipments and, you know, slow down on receiving goods so as we can see we declined further down we got range bound from monday from sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday and eventually we're trying to break up as long as we can clear the scandal here we can continue higher so let's now go to the rty small cap and you know rty we can look at the bank sector we are in a linear regression up channel these are the overnight we looked up and came back down. We fell back down. We tested that double bottom. I consider this like a W, uh, like a double bottom. Is this going to be the head of it and create a shoulder inverted, or do we continue back in this inside this upper range in this linear regression to the upper channel here in order to continue higher, or do we fall back down and create a shoulder like here on the right to continue back up? This was, remember, Friday was, you know, a fast close. Uh, we had an, a sharp fast close in the last 15 minute of the day to continue higher and basically squeeze the shorts out of the market so that's the rty let's take a look at the nasdaq 100 and in the nasdaq 100 we can see in the last two weeks three weeks we were looking a little bit further because there was sector rotation from the tech uh, sector such as google netflix you know amazon's of the world's apple of the world that we regained a little bit we went sideways for a week and eventually on Monday, Tuesday, we were okay, and eventually Thursday, Friday, we fell down. We came back on Wednesday, back in the middle of the range. We are in a symmetrical triangle. Let's keep an eye off the NASDAQ, going to, you know, rotate still, and we go sideways, or do we come back and regain that area in the NASDAQ levels? Let's take a look at now the ES, which is the uh, S&P 500. Whoops slash es as we can see in the s p 500 we reclaimed the prior weeks you know uh range where we fell down a little bit below it then we continued higher then we came back inside the prior week range but my eyes are on the monthly fit because we have cleared it and my and the second thing i have 3900 as a mental number in this area to keep an eye on uh, if we do continue higher or not, that's very important in the S&P 500. We can take a look at gold. Gold hasn't done much in this last week or so. It's been range bound for the last, you know, two weeks, three weeks range until it clears the uh, 1747 uh, area or it goes below the 1708 area that's in gold in order to get direction. But you can trade inside the range until we resolve out of that area let's take a look at cl crude oil as we can see after that push higher crude consolidated for about a week then eventually on that uh, thursday friday we fell back down then on friday we reclaimed half that move from thursday then we fell down in the prior in the coming week which is this week monday tuesday wednesday back up thursday back down friday back up still inside this range as long as we are above the 5850 i consider crude oil to be okay above the 50 percent monthly fib remember these monthly anchored fibs we will we will change them eventually for the coming month uh, for march so it will ship from february 1st till february 26th and we go back from march 1st till march 31st where the highs and low and we'll anchor this range as you can see here this was the march high to the march low unless we come in here in the coming week so that's on crude oil and if we clear you know we stay above that 58.50 and we clear the 63 area 62.50 i think continuation back to the upside of this range where we fell down on this bar such as exxon mobil let's take a look at the uh, btc which is the bitcoin here as we can see in bitcoin we have looked part of the gap 
in here, as you can see, we retested a little tiny bit of it and we we reversed back up, but we are still in that down linear regression channel. As long as Bitcoin cannot clear the 55,400, 56,000, 56,000, I think Bitcoin may come back in one more time to the middle of this channel at the 50,000 and may eventually fill that first gap to come back in this consolidation in the market. I hope this was helpful in Bitcoin. We can take a look at the ETFs. So uh, I can look at the ETFs and we can go into the IEF, which is the bond market short term 10 year treasury notes. We can still see that the interest rates are starting to nickel up. We tried to stabilize this week. We looked up and came back in on a Friday a little bit. This is in the IEF. If I look at the uh, XLF, which is the banking sector, as you can see, we went up when uh, interest rates were trying to settle back in. We saw that the banks came in a little bit in the financial sector and we recovered part back on Friday. That's the XLF. XLE which is the energy sector. You can see we fell back down and we tried to reclaim back up. We can look at now at the uh, XLK, that's the tech sector part of the NASDAQ. As you can see, it has a similar pattern like the QQQ. It tried to con uh, consolidate in the last week's range and eventually we fell down Wednesday, Thursday. Then on Friday, we recuperated 100% in the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look at the XLV, which is the healthcare sector. As we can see, we have reclaimed the prior two week range and we're pushing back up to the annual high in XLV. So most important thing in trading, what I want to say is keep an eye and open mind on what you are doing and make sure you look at the different time frames. I'm going to look at the NYA, which is part of the New York Stock Exchange. This is the New York Composite Index. As we can see in the prior week where we're consolidating, then we fell back down and we're trying to reclaim the prior week's range. We are back in the middle of that prior week range. In order to continue, we have to see that annual high breakout. Or do we consolidate, create a cup and handle right in this area around the 15,550 in order to continue higher or not? Keep an open mind on that. Uh, New York Stock Exchange Composite, and I will look at JNK. I'm just trying to go through different sectors. This is the Bloomberg uh, Barclay High Yield, and you can see that the yield starting to nickel its way back up. Keep in mind that there is inflation down around the corner, possibility in the future. As long as the Federal Reserve Board keeps pumping money, we should be okay. And this is the VIX. We have reclaimed almost 100% of the gap from um, February through March 23rd of 2020. That was the February, you know, uh, 20 through the 23rd. And eventually we, you know, we gapped up and we continued higher. We retested a couple of times and, you know, we cleared it. And this is uh, like yesterday, which is today's range. We finally retested a little bit more than the Monday range, Tuesday range lows. And we are still in the lower distribution here. As long as I am below the 23, 25 area, there's no fear in the market. We are stabilizing. Does this economy recover over time because of the reopening and people going back to their jobs and unemployment will start to, you know, see, you know, uh, recovery soon. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can once again, check us out at Solstice ATR or Vulcan. And make sure if you need anything, you can DM me on Twitter or on Discord. Over and out. Enjoy your weekend.